in diagnosis, the cause of shock, and the value of ultrasound in treatment of shock. Uh, the first question here, what is the most important thing you need to know for diagnosis of shock? Now, you have got a call from RR, from medical department. You went there, there is hypotensive patient. What is the important clue you need to know first to help you in going through management of all cause of shock? What is the most important thing? Tell us his shock. Volume status, excellent. What does it mean? The most important pathognomonic signs you need to search for is the sign which divide the cause of shock equally. To go in this path to this path, okay? Volume status is the most important thing you need to search, to search for in shock the patient. You see this? I need this to, yeah, go cross for if you see this patient shocked in my the RR, probably you will think about hypovolemic, infectious, septic, and distributive shock, allergic. If you see this type of inferior vena cava, probably this patient the cause of shock would be obstructive cause of shock or cardiogenic cause of shock. So, just assessing the volume status by assessing the inferior vena cava, very easy. You can divide the cause of shock 50% and the 50 percent First, flat inferior vena cava. Think about hypovolemia, septic, anaphylaxis. First, hypovolemia. I know all of you now are pioneer and the master the fast. You need, especially if the patient's trauma, you need to search for bleed in the abdomen. Here, subhepatic, morosum, around spleen, spleen urina, pelvic, pleural, and even aortic dissection. This is First one. Second, septic. What is the common cause of sepsis in ICU? Probably pneumonia. It's very easy to see this consolidated lung with moving air bronchogram, lung like a liver. Usually a lung is a line. Now the lung is consolidated like the liver. With air bronchogram, this white cord going up and down can diagnose pneumonia straightforward. What else? Urinary tract infection, urine retention, or cervical. And this is the other cause, which is in Bayema What else? Liver abscess, collapsing inferior vena cava, and some fibrin here. Cholecystitis. This patient, still in hospital, this patient has very aggressive salmonella cholecystitis. Only sensitive to merobinam. He took two gram merobinam Q8 hours. Is still spiking fever for two weeks, is still septic. Follow up, reveal salmonella abscess in the spleen. And it was small, and we follow this abscess in daily basis, and the patient did indeed surgery recovered by medical team. What else? This is after central line, you can diagnose. Philippitis and septic thrombosis after central line. As you see here, very easy, straightforward. You can diagnose pneumonia, urinary tract infection, line infection, abdominal infection, 
and this is a common cause and I know now you are pioneering abscess and cellulitis so you have the old package for diagnosis of sepsis as a cause of chop. Unfortunately, we can swear you, we, we, we have a rule, inshallah, anaphylaxis uh, later, but unfortunately has no rule in the past. Oh. Okay. But what if you see this full inferior vena cava in shocked patient? Excellent. Cardiogenic or? Great, great. You are pioneer now. First look for cardiogenic. You can diagnose all causes of cardiogenic shock by echo. Let's just see. What is this? Very bad ejection fraction, very bad heart, very bad myocardium as a cause of shock. What is this? If you see this in, in RR, with this wall is acclimated and this wall is moving, and the patient shock. Probably this is the ischemic heart. What if you see this in the girl, this fusion, this bad myocardium, probably cardiogenic cause? What if you see this white aorta, dilated aorta, and this regurg, bad regurg? Probably this is a cause of shock. What if you see this mass moving in the valve? This is, has a rule in shock. What if you see this? What is this? This patient came with a status, bad status of lipticus, developed what is called Takutsubu syndrome, epical akinesia of the heart, ballooning, epical ballooning, and this is very common. Stress mouse is very common. We usually see in daily basis in septic patient. And this patient probably has severe stress by status of lipticus, and after proper treatment of the status, now require normal apical contraction. This patient, what is this? This patient developed inferior infarction and it developed this bad right, the right ventricle with bad tricuspid regage, this kinetic septum because of very bad right ventricular infarction with inferior infarction. So, echo can diagnose valvular heart disease, infectious disease like endocarditis, ischemic heart disease, myocardial disease. Second, obstructive cause of shock. First, pulmonary embolism. If you see this right side ballooning, this is your first suspicious about the cause of pulmonary embolism as a cause of shock. You will go to for a chamber view, you will see right side ballooning compressing over the left side. You will go short axis by the view, you will see this famous D shape because ballooning the right side, pressing with the septum, make D shape of the left ventricle. <laughs> After that, you need to differentiate between is it chronic process of core pulmonary? or pulmonary hypertension, chronic pulmonary hypertension, or this is an acute event due to acute pressure overload, acute core pulmonary of pulmonary impulse. You need to search for two things. McConnell science is very helpful. If you see the apex is furious and moving properly with acclimatic of the septum, this is probably a McConnell sign which is specific for pulmonary impulse. Second, you measure the wall of right ventricle. If it's more than 0.7, it's chronic process. It's less than 0.5, probably it's acute. Okay? And the other thing for acute corporal pulmonary, but ECO has a rule in diagnosis acute corporal pulmonary and pulmonary embolism. And if the patient cannot go to CT angio, according to European guideline, you can rely on the echo picture of acute corbin monad and you can give thrombolysis to save the patient life. This is for medical team, and all of the few. <laughs> if suspect pulmonary embolism, probably you need to check for DVT. Okay, echo help you in DVT. Like here, you see blood all around the thrombus here in the femoral. 
What else? Pericardial tamponade. Unfortunately, some videos I need to run from the uh, from my computer, not from the machine. Okay. This rare cause of restrictive pericardium due to calcific TB pericardium. Okay? Time. Now, I will give you a clue to differentiate between obstructed and cardiogenic cause of choice. I need you to go to lung now. Keep the heart and go to the lung. In obstructive shock, the lung is dry because there is obstruction for blood to go to the lung. You will see dry now. In cardiogenic shock, yes. the lung is wet. So, please, go to lung and look for, is it yes. A line or it's B wet line? to differentiate between two. I need to ask one intelligent of the candidate questions now. You're probing the chest. What are you going to look for now as a cause of obstructive shock to finish the obstructive cause of shock? Who will? Pneumothorax. Pneumothorax, excellent. Who is my son? Me. <laughs> okay, I will give gift to you. You see, this beauty lung, beauty lung sliding with non sliding, which is lung boy, which is almost 100% specific for pneumosaurus. If you fire the MMOOT in this area between the normal and the abnormal, you will get the well known. Seashore appearance of normal lung with barcode of the abnormal lung. Okay. Now you finish all causes of choke. And I believe I can convince you that the echo medical team echo is important for them. Okay. What is the main treatment of choke? Main treatment of choke? Main treatment of choke is proper IV fluids. Is that right? I believe proper IV fluids is the most tricky point to treat the child. In Obreso, you will give dopamine, noradrenaline, adrenaline. What is the time for Obreso or Inotropes? Treat to the cause. Now, as you see, we know about the cause. We can treat the cause. We know about the inotropic ability of the heart. That, and we know about the contractility of the heart. We know about the sepsis. So we can select about vasopressors and inotropes. Proper IV fluids. Proper IV fluids, two things. I think proper time, now crystallize. Proper timing and the proper amount. And this is the second half of my lecture. Proper timing. If you see this patient shock, in, I think you will start giving IV fluids in time zero. In no time, because you can get this image in second, and you can start IV fluids in second. For proper time, is it okay? What about proper amount? Let us see. IV fluid is a drug. You need to give that. Like, you give it to <laughs> medical team. <demons. laughs> I will go. <laughs> now, you are. You are here now to, okay, I will see. Okay. Let us see, okay, let's see. I was asked, I was asked to assess a 75 years old man admitted two days back because acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema due to severe ischemic heart disease and ischemic cardiomyopathy precipitated by chest infection. It is straight away. Patient giving medication, anti-ischemic, antibiotic, and required to function drop from 100 to 40 percent over two days. He improved, all chemistry are okay, improved, but creatinine started to rise. Patient developed, I, I, I went to see the patient, patient developed hypertension, blood pressure 50, 30, heart rate 100, patient already on dopiotrex and noradrenaline, good dose, okay? Now, I start critical care ultrasound for this patient. 
Uh, we'll start by, this is a land observation with pneumonia and this is start to, uh, okay, let's start to talk ultrasonography. This is the inferior vena cava, but the patient is on mechanical ventilation. Yet, in mechanical ventilation, you will expect, you will talk about the sensibility of the inferior vena cava. And the inferior vena cava will increase in size during inspiration. If you get this maximum diameter minus the minimum diameter over minimum diameter multiplied by 100, you get what's called the sensibility of the inferior vena cava. Not like spontaneous spread patient collapsibility. In the sensibility, you are talking about 80%. In this patient, it was 34%. That means the patient is, the tank is empty, okay? The patient needs fluids. This is the patient heart. Very bad stable cardiomyopathy, as you see here, check fraction almost 10%. Uh, this uh, Simpson method, it's 21% check fraction. And there is a line in the lung. And the patient has small kidneys, okay? Okay, uh, uh, to, to fit the puzzle together, this patient has chronic renal, acute on top of chronic renal environment, has very bad myocardium, and now, now because of sepsis, the patient needs fluids. Need fluids because the patient has fear of vena cava, despite heart failure, is still distensive, okay? The question is here, how much I the fluids you will give? Okay, how much I fluids you give? Now we are talking about still 25 per kg, no, 30, 30. For this patient with renal failure and the patient with heart failure, you are giving for this patient two liters. You are, you are happy? No, decrease. Okay, you will decrease. How much will you give? 10. 10 milligrams. 10 milligrams. Okay, you need to go down. Now let us see how can you manage from the eco point of view or ultrasound point of view. This is the famous Frank Starling curve. Okay? Frank Starling curve talk about preload, which is fluids given to the patient, and stroke volume, which is the reward of the good fluids. This is the normal. This is our patient here. You give fluids, and you will not expect too much increase the stroke volume. But, in all these care, because each patient has his unique st Frank Starry care, at least the logic and all people talk about, please give fluids as in hypotensive patient, give fluids in hypotensive patient as long as the patient on the steep part of the care. Yeah, keep going with high fluids as long as stroke volume is increasing. But once the stroke volume here is plateauing, 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 please stop. You will get congestion and you will not get perfusion. At the moment, and this is the best way to give fluids at the moment, because I believe this will change later. But at the moment, you are talking about give fluids as long as the stroke volume is increasing. By how much? 10%. Okay, you'll ask me, Walid, can I know stroke volume by ultrasound, is it logic? Because for this care, I need to know about stroke volume and the fluids given, okay? Yes, then it's, it's very easy to get stroke volume by echocardiograph. Look for this, this five chamber view. Once you get vertical five chamber view and you will put parts of wave Doppler here above the aortic part, and you will fire the pulsed wave, you will get this, what's called VTI, that Doppler flow from the outflow tract, from the left ventricle through outflow tract to the body, to the wall. okay? This is the stroke volume. This is a surrogate of stroke volume. You can consider this stroke volume. This is a VTI. You can consider it and you can deal it as stroke volume, okay? Let us back to our patient. Our patient, this is arterial line, you see here, fluctuation of the arterial line because the patient is hypovolemic. We start by VTI of 6.34. What's the time here? It was... Okay, it's 4 o'clock. Okay. 9, 9, sorry. 9, 19, okay? We start to give bolus of eye fluid, as Dr. said. You can start by 100, 200 bolus of eye fluid and follow up the VTI. This is after first bolus, start invasive to increase, 
and became VTI 8.5. Within, within you are talking about minutes, give another bolus, blood pressure now is okay, start to improve. At the, the, the fluctuation, pulse pressure variation will start to improve, and VTI is 12. The normal VTI is from 18 to 22. For this special trouble, we expect this low VTI. As you see here, you will keep going by giving high fluids as long as the VTI increasing by 10%. But please, what is the most important fear complication you should consider in this patient with renal failure and heart failure? Pulmonary congestion. Mm -hmm. So, you will follow the fear velocata and you will follow the B line. Map your lung. Is that lung of the Not your lung. <laughs> Map the patient lung and know the, the way the air line it is anterior, lateral, and once the beginning a B line start to appear, now it's okay. You need that your patient tolerance is enough for the fluids, and now you get the best bolus of IV fluids. Yeah, there is a lot of reference if you need to know about that. Is it time for protocol? I think this is time for protocol. Okay? Now there is time for the protocol, which is range protocol, no trash protocol. Okay? Are you ready for protocol? Ready? Ah, he's also ready. <laughs> Who knows, Dr. Hussam uh, Mahama? This, you know, Hussam huh? This is the rabbit Hussam Mahama. Unfortunately, this is my cup of tea. <laughs> okay. Okay, Ram, uh, don't touch protocol. Step one, look for the fear in a cab. If the fear in a cab is narrow, flat, you are talking about hypovolemic, septic allergic. As regards hypovolemic, do fast. As regards septic, look for pneumonia, urethral infection, abdominal infection, to diagnose the cause of trauma. What if the inferior vena cava is full? You are talking about obstructive and cardiogenic shock. Go to line, dry line, going with obstructive shock. Wet line, go with cardiogenic shock, okay? If obstructive shock, pulmonary ovulence suspected, look for DVT. After that, Follow proper IV fluids by aortic VTI, inferior vena cava, and lung water. And step six will come to ultrasound club. This is easy thing. Good news, dermal care for ultrasound is very steep. All of my, uh, our consultants and here know that. And uh, I hope you start to learn yourself because believe me, you are your teacher. No one will teach you. We'll give you the basis and you should Close the curtain, no chain, start to open the machine, and I wish good luck for all of you. Thank you. <laughs> you will be like this, Arnav, I think. <laughs>